And welcome back to Subculture After Dark. Well, we have a guest on the phone right now that we know so many of you are excited to hear from. Of course, the exploited are about to hit our shores for a tour. And we know a lot of you out there have already gone out and got tickets. But we thought we would actually get Waddy on the phone today to chat a little bit about this amazing tour. And uh, he'll tell us a little bit about what the band's got in store for us. Welcome to the program, mate. How do you mean, right? Now, mate, this is an absolute honour having a legend like yourself on our show. So thank you so much for taking the time to chat to us today. And I guess, first up, how are you feeling about this Australian tour that uh, is just about to kick off? Well, it's been a, it's been a while. It's been, uh, it's been almost three years now since we came over. Two, two, years, two years with COVID and uh, the last time we were in New Zealand... And the day we went to fly to Australia, they closed the border. <clears throat> and then we meant to come back to Australia in, in February there. Then after I was in the hospital, I was took ill. So we had to postpone it until November. So Monday we fly, we fly on Monday. And all the guys in the band are super excited. Looking forward to coming over. You know, and we can't wait to get started. Awesome. Well, mate, that was going to be one of my questions a little bit later on, but I'll ask it now, seeing you've brought it up. Um, we have been worried about your health over the last few years. How are you right now? Um, your fans would love to know. Yeah, it was well. Went for a scan today from the hospital. That, that was okay. Yep. <clears throat> but, uh, I've got a chest infection, but that's minor. Uh, but, uh, listen, every day is a good day. I thought I'd... I thought I had cancer, but I got told two weeks ago that it's clear, so that was a good thing. That was a good thing. But every day, like I say, I should be dead, eh? So every day is a good day for me. I just look forward. I don't, I don't look back the way. So as long as I feel okay, yeah. I can do gigs, do gigs 100%, do the 100% effort, then, then uh, I'm quite happy with that. Uh, I've been there as well with, I've got uh, a pretty major um, health condition and I've been told by a doctor before it's it's a wonder you're not dead. Did you find when you were told that, that you approach life a lot differently these days? No, 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 I had five heart attacks, five heart attacks, another quad heart bypass. And, but the only one, the only time I, I never thought about it, I never, really dwe- I never dwelt on it, never dwelt on them. Because I didn't really think, I just thought, oh, I can just a heart attack and go on with it. But I had the uh, bus stomach ulcers uh, in, this, in February, that's why we never came over. I had bus stomach ulcers and it was like blood, didn't it? It was just like, it was like, a, blood, like a blood bath. Yeah. And I always really thought I was going to die. It was just like fucking shit and then fucking spewing blood up. It was just like both ends. It was horrendous. And I always really thought I was going to die. That's the first time, the first time ever that I felt like Definitely. But yeah, my health's, my, health, my health's been shitty, but like, uh, <clears throat> I've had loads of support, I've had loads, loads of good wishes for people all over the world, and from, uh, even people that, like, will never get on, people that will never get on, even a lot of people send me, like, uh, good messages when, when they thought I had cancer. But, uh, aye, so, like I say, every, every, there's always someone worse than yourself, but so, that's what I look at, it's like, Definitely. That's what... Now, I think you're going to find this time around when you come to Australia that there are a lot of people out there that see your music in a very different light now. I think a lot of a lot of people in Australia got very angry for the first time um, during the COVID years. We had some of the most locked down cities in the world. We had a prime minister who, first of all, failed the country when it came to the bushfire disaster. And then COVID. I've seen it. I read that. Yeah, so I think there's going to be a lot of people this time around that that understand your lyrics a lot more. Is that something that you've found a lot over the recent years? I 
think the in the, in the early days, like people, a lot, there was a lot, was a lot of people that like, come from working, I come from a pure, a pure working class family, like real poor, come from poverty. And uh, back when we started in, in '79, uh, there's so much poverty, real poverty, and now, now we've got not the Tory government. The government we have is fucking total assholes, total wankers, total rich cunts, fucking. Who's, they don't give a fuck about, so they don't, they don't give a, a toss about anybody back for themselves. And I think now a lot, of, I think a lot of people now understand what. Uh, I think more people, a lot of more people understand what our music's about. Eh? Oh, definitely. But like our, our, our music's no uh, explain explain the both We've always been uh, extreme. We've always been, we've always been in the, in the edge. We've never changed. We're, we're no commercial. We're not a pop band, we're not fucking, we're not Mr. Nice Guys, fucking, our music's for working class, our music's, our music's here for, uh, to make people think about, about the injustice of what goes on in this world. Yeah. We look at like, uh, we look at Palestine, man, all these, all these people are getting fucking massacred over there, and the British government and the American government are doing fuck all about it, it's a, it's a fucking bloodbath. It's a, so like, punk music, so punk music, oh, Punk, real punk music will never die because there's always there's so much so much crap going on, real crap going on in life. No, yeah. no, 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 like all the, no, like all the stupid be stories about uh, I'm a them or a, all these cats want to change their name or their sexuality. What a lot of shit. So uh, that's there's a lot there's a lot of real things going on in life. But like, yeah, but they, even they deserve, like they deserve it, attention. Even your songs from when you talk about things like Big Brother and, and CCTV, in Australia, that was always something that I, I feel that a lot of Australians didn't understand. But then during the COVID lockdowns, we had the, we had the government using drones to watch to make sure people weren't walking their dogs and things like that. So I think people have got a, a better understanding now. So do you think that'll change the Australian crowds when you're here this time? I don't know. Depends if it depends if I've heard the, if I've heard the band. Yep. Because <laughs> <laughs> explain like, like one of the biggest punk bands in the world, but like we've got like uh, I mean all the people that listen to punk, punk music know who we are, but maybe a lot of but maybe a lot of other people have never heard them. Maybe I've heard the name, but I don't know the music. <clears throat> so and uh, I don't know what to, I don't know what to expect. I, I just know like. Uh, the people that come along are, are going to have a good, they're going to have a good time. They're going to have a good night, and they, uh, and uh, I, I think, I think some. I think you're right from what you say. Like with COVID, a lot of things have changed. Even like with Iraq war and that, lot, in the UK, like oh, even over here, with COVID they're trying to bring in laws to keep you keep you in the house and fucking suppress you. It's a fucking it's a total joke. It's like a police. police Try to make, make up laws to make up laws so you can't even protest that anymore. Hey, all this fucking stupid shit. What do you tell us a little bit about the set list that you guys are thinking about playing here in Australia? Because you guys have got so many amazing tracks. Does it get more difficult these days to to work out a set list when you come to a country like Australia that you don't come to uh, as often? <coughs> what, what is? No, what we got. Uh, I play, I play all the, all the, I play all the songs that I like, eh? and all, all the songs that I, the, all the songs that I like, eh? I play all the exploded songs that like, I think people want to hear. So we've got like, I was going to say old and new, but there's none, there's none new. But I, I think the old, we've got old and older, no like old and new songs as because the last, the last songs were done like twenty years ago, twenty odd years ago. So like beat the bastards, fuck the system, punks are dead, like the punks are dead, cop cars, sex and violence. Like, uh, and like, we've got, we've got like, we play like, we play like stuff from the very beginning, right up to the last album. And, uh, we play, uh, things about 22, 24, 22 songs, 24 songs maybe. So we play, we play a lot of songs there. We awesome. try to cover, yeah. try to cover the, the whole, like, to the early, to the very beginning, to the end. You've done some legendary shows here in Australia over the years. Do you have fond memories of Australia and your fans here? I remember. I, don't be, I remember playing. Uh, was it? Was it Adelaide? Yep. Adelaide. So Adelaide. Yep. Played Adelaide. 
And I remember like there's people there like for another area who like we were just talking shit. We're just talking, which we were for a different scene, talking, talking shit about each other. Eh? And uh, the big massive fight started. It was, I thought it was quite funny. That was like, one of the gigs. I don't want to fight anybody. The fucking the fighting over because they, you know, they, they come from two different cities. And uh, the and they're like growing men, not like, not like kids. I thought that was, was even funnier. I mean, it's like it's growing men fighting. And that's fucking a bit stupid. But uh, I've never, I've met, I've met loads, I've met loads of good people in Australia, and uh, I've met a couple, I've met quite a lot of good bands in Australia as well, eh? Bands like Rost, uh, yep. Police Bastard, it's a Police Bastard, it's a Bastard Squad, it's a Police Bastard, or Bastard Squad, it's one of the two. Bastard Squad, yeah. Uh, and uh, Bastard Squad, like, like, they're good, like, they're, they're an old band, eh? Man, Rost is good, Can't a few, look at a few bands in Australia. Pretty good bands, but uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't. I don't know any new bands for Australia. I've been there for ages. One of the things I have noticed in Australia over the last few years is there is a lot more younger people getting around in exploited uh, t-shirts rather than us old farts. Um, have you noticed right. that, like over the last few um, years, like over the last decade, that you now have multi-generational fans coming yeah. to your shows? We're, we're, we're one of the, to be honest, we're like, we're one of the only like, UK British bands, like, but I know, only, well, for the our concerts, I think we're the, one of the only UK punk bands that we have, we do just have like, all people, like, people like, like if, all the old punks, we get like, we got, we get everybody, we get a lot of young, a lot of younger kids come. We just played in Estonia, uh, in Estonia, a few months ago, and it was like, I'm like, what the fuck? It was like, I thought it was like a kindergarten. It was like all these kids, they'd be 10, 14 year old and that. It's like, like loads, like loads of them. But that's a good time because it's new blood. And they, and they had a good time. They all enjoyed themselves. But they were on the stage singing and stuff. And uh, nah, it's, it's, it's like, it's, I, find, I do find it a bit weird because back in the day, it was uh, slightly exploited. You had to like, we would love the music. Yeah, too, because they like the music, because we, like, we were pretty fast and pretty extreme for that for that for that time. And uh, now we, well, now we go to gigs. It was like uh, you got to feel like sixty year olds to like fourteen year olds to come to the gigs. It's, uh, it's a good thing. It's good to see all these young kids. But I find sometimes I find that sometimes I find that a bit funny. To see all these young kids with exploit t shirts and one. But for me, it's a. Uh, it's I think I, 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 it's, for me, it's like. Uh, so we're uh, quite proud that uh, yeah. a lot of young kids are liking the music. Definitely. Well, mate, I know we are running out of time and you've got other interviews to get to as well. So I guess to finish off, what would you like to say to all of your Australian fans out there who are about to see you guys live over the next couple of weeks? Look, okay, well, see them. Uh, come to the gig, buy a t-shirt, buy a t-shirt and fuck off. <laughs> <laughs>